Welcome to the Elliot Confidential Podcast. I am Christopher Elliot, and I'm joined by my sons, Aaron Elliot and Aiden Elliot. How are you guys doing? I am doing amazing. Doing absolutely amazing too. And yes. you sound amazing as well. We just got back from Dubrovnik, Croatia. One of the most buzzy destinations that I think we've ever been to. And when I say buzzy, I mean it's got a lot of buzz. People like to talk about Croatia and visit, but they especially like Dubrovnik. So we will talk about that. And we'll also talk about some of uh, last week's amazing feedback that we had on our podcast. What did we get? Are, are you going to read? You're going to read the letters this time, right, Aiden? You're correct. Okay. This week's question, though, before I forget, is tell us about the most historic destination that you've ever been to whether it's a real history or kind of a fake history. And by fake, I mean like Disney fake. Not that I think Disney is fake, but like Epcot is pretty fakey. But it's fun. It's fun fake, right? Anyway, um, tell us about the most fake, I mean, the most real or fake uh, historic destination that you have ever been to. Leave a comment in the comments and we will read your comments as we always do at the end of our next podcast, as we will with this podcast. Yes. So, Dubrovnik. Let's start at the very beginning because uh, we didn't just drive to Dubrovnik. How did we get there, Aaron? Well, we took a catamaran. So that means that we went to the port of Split and we took a ferry. And yeah, I don't think they had cars on the boat, but it was a catamaran. It was a speedboat, it was a very fast boat. And even then it took us, you know, four and a half hours to get to our destination. Stopped at a lot of really beautiful places. So this is a boat that stops at Hvar, which is an island, and a bunch of other islands. And yeah, and it's a it's a nice ride. Gets a little bit tedious after a while. Yeah. I only remember Hvar. That was that was the first stop. But these are all these beautiful coastal villages that look like they were they're from a painting basically. And, exactly. And I wish we had had the time to get off and explore them all. I understand that they're very beautiful, but we didn't have the time. We kept going because we needed to get to Dubrovnik. And then we got to Dubrovnik and Aiden, first impressions of Dubrovnik, what did you think? It's a little city on a hill next to the ocean. <laughs> yes. Do they have a nice uh, city center within well, the walls? It's, it's very well preserved, right? It's not well preserved, it's well restored because it had a beating. Oh, yeah, it got hammered during it the war. It got hammered <laughs> during multiple wars. So it was, it's not very well preserved. It's very well restored. Uh, but past that, it's very historic. You so, walk yeah. past the walls and you'll see how it looked hundreds of years ago. Right. And uh, we talked with actually a local there, and she was talking about how uh, a lot of the history is actually kind of going because tourists are overrunning the. Uh, are overrunning the city and now instead of places where kids originally played on the streets and uh, vendors sold food to the locals you now have trendy restaurants uh, that tourists like to go and to. And souvenir shops too. Souvenir Sarah, shops selling too. There's one souvenir shop that sells rubber duckies. Yeah and now uh, because the the real estate in there uh, within the walls is so you know expensive a lot of the uh, locals sold and then moved out. So now most locals are outside of that city center. Yeah. It is an incredible, um, incredibly well-preserved city. It's uh, got walls around it. So it's, um, and, I, and I didn't realize this, but Dubrovnik used to be a republic and it, it was independent for a long time. Did a lot of shipping and trade. Uh, our guide's name was Lydia. Do you guys remember Lydia? Yeah, yes, that's who I was talking about. Yeah, and she told us about how life had really changed. She was there during the war when it was being shelled by Montenegro. There was a little skirmish during, and it wasn't a little skirmish, it was actually a pretty major war where the Yugoslav Federation was coming apart and uh, they were shelling the city. And so we saw pictures of how the village, the, well, how Dubrovnik looked during the war and they burned down a couple of buildings and they've since restored them, but it was it was a pretty serious thing. She knew some people who had been killed in the war, but now it is all about the tourism and it's just incredible. They have basically, the tourists have chased out all the locals. There's uh, only a few thousand people who actually live in Dubrovnik. Everyone else has fled to, they've run for the hills. They're out there 
Basically. Uh, living, living in the hills mm -hmm. uh, where the, the real estate is cheaper. Yeah, where children once played, now tourists play on their phone. That's true. So these uh, homes are, are actually now VRBO and Airbnb rentals. And the stores that used to sell bread now are selling, and I'm not making this up, there's a store there that sells only rubber duckies. And also Game of Thrones merchandise. Oh, yeah, because Game <laughs> of Thrones was filmed there and also in Split, but uh, yeah, they love their Game of Thrones. They'll always find a way to profit. Yep. Yes. You, the viewers, are lucky because we haven't seen any Game of Thrones. And so we can't go down that rabbit hole, even if you want us to. <laughs> I have seen one episode of Game of Thrones, and it was fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not really into it, but it was, it was fine. I'll speak your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. What, what, what happens in Game of Thrones? What is it about? Well, it's just like a fantasy. Uh, it's not you know, based on any kind of... Like Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, a little bit like that, yeah. Oh, so like nerds watch it. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, you have to be into that, I guess. None of our I'm listeners. purposely trying to offend people. Oh, okay, well, all right. Let's talk about food. Why? Why do you have to do this to me? <laughs> don't. Okay, for, okay. For the, look, don't go to Dubrovnik for food. Don't go to Croatia for food unless you really like chivapčići. Chivapčići. We did uh, have uh, yes. some chivapčići. I know. Yes. I personally, uh, I've been eating lots of chicky nuggies. Chiki, yes. Chicky yes. chicky nuggies. Delicious. Uh, that's reliable food that you can put in the oven oh, and I'm, or the microwave. Oh my, yeah, oh, we don't have so, a microwave here. No, no microwave. But yeah. it's oh man, I I sure do love my chicky nuggies. Yes. And not Croatian food. Okay. Croatian food is an acquired taste. There are people who love it. Uh, we, we, I have actually met a, with a friend who does love Croatian food. And there's some Croatian food that's actually, you know, not terrible. I mean, they make good pizza because they're close to Italy. And uh, the chivapcici. Uh, that's arguable, the, the pizza the part. Pizza, that's very yeah, arguable. I was about to say that. That's pretty... Um, let's move know, on. Let's, let's talk about something. Statements. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, they're close to Italy, so they must have good pizza. We stayed at a place called the Villa Orabella, right outside of town, with a gorgeous view of the Adriatic. Yes, very, and very beautiful. It, it had these, like it was postcard perfect. You know, we'll I'll put up some pictures. Yeah, that's a, one of the most beautiful hotels we've stayed at. Definitely, like you could take this, you could take a photo of this hotel at any angle, and it would be beautiful. And also, you look outside the window. Not only do you see the Adriatic, which is beautiful. But you also see like the, the, the you see the cliffs, you see the old city, uh, so you see old town, and also you have a little sort of communal like you can go off the balcony and into a communal pool, which I thought was pretty neat. Oh yeah, it's like one of those. In, I don't think it's an infinity pool, but it's one of those edgeless pools. One of them was an infinity pool. Yeah. Yeah. We're not big swimmers. I don't like going into pools. Um, but and we didn't go into the ocean, but it, I, I, it's my understanding that the ocean is very nice this time of year uh, because it's it's warmed up and so you don't you can go in and not cool you know it's not freezing cold like you know like it is in April or May. Exactly. We did two things while we were there though. One of them was we walked the wall and Iden you missed it because you have a bad knee but your knee's better now. But Aaron and I walked the wall, and it is, uh, someone called it like the Great Wall of Europe because it's one of the biggest and best restored or best maintained walls. You can walk all the way around the, the town. Yes. And so what, what did you think of that, Aaron? Me? Yeah, you. Personally, it, it's a beautiful walk, but on a hot summer day, like... Um, it's hot. I, it, it gets really hot, so I just wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Do it unless, in the morning, yeah. Unless yeah. it's nice weather, because you're going to do a lot of climbing upstairs and things like that. But once you're there, you get a really good view of the city. Uh, you get to see it from a new perspective. Speaking of the wall, though, if you want a really, a, a, the real view of Dubrovnik. Then you have to go up the uh, what do you call the gondola? Cable cross, oh, the cable definitely. Yeah. That was such that a was beautiful cool. view up there. It was nice. Yeah, we got some excellent pictures. We will yeah. share those in the podcast. Definitely uh, worth it. Online. Any listeners here, if you want to get a beautiful view of Dubrovnik, if you ever visit, if you ever decide to, that is a must. And as an added benefit, uh, you don't have to really worry about the weather since you don't have to move as much. 
So for our disabled listeners, this might be the option for getting that perfect view. That's right. Um, the views are really amazing. I'm going to put one of the pictures up in my Forbes article that goes up tomorrow. So. Yeah. There's not many uh, views like that that you can get in no. a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Well, and you would be thinking about being disabled because you had that really bad knee. Yes. No, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yes, yes. No, I'm not trying You're to... not in a wheelchair like, yet. Like if, I was in, <laughs> if I was in a wheelchair with my knee busted up, that would be where I went. So speaking of which, um, who would you recommend Dubrovnik for? Who do you think should visit? Uh, somebody who loves going to very touristy areas. <laughs> and someone Historical who loves uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. Yes, because I will tell you what. The tourists there don't seem to care very much about the history, even though the history is quite interesting and, you know, old and there's that's, a lot yeah, of that's it. what history so, is. It's old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dubrovnik is so picturesque and it's so beautiful. So if you're like a photographer and you want those beautiful European chic sort of photos, uh, this is a really great place for it too because it's just so stunningly beautiful. I mean, even if the... The city is infested with tourists, and even if we don't really have a thing for the food, and maybe you don't like the food either, even even with all of these these things, like it's a beautiful city. I can't argue with that. Yeah. If I were to rank it in terms of the most beautiful European city, which maybe we want to do now, I would say it's definitely at the top. Like I can't really think of a European city that's more beautiful um, or better restored. I'm having a hard time thinking of it. It's actually, you know, I think that if you if you take one of those Disney Imagineers, you know, the ones that design rides and you know park things, and you you tell you ask them to like design a European village, they would design Dubrovnik. No, they would just copy and paste Dubrovnik. That's right. They would no, go. no, they would. I thought they did Nice because they already did a European city. Oh, and now that, that nice. one, well, that car ride is gone. Yeah, they, they took it away. Ride. That's sad. I would have yeah, loved to compare. Now it's all and Star Wars land, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, I would not recommend Dubrovnik for someone who has disabilities, severe disabilities, because uh, they're really are. It's not like handicapped accessible. It's um, there's a lot of cobblestones and a lot of stairs. So make sure that you uh, can at least walk up a flight of stairs if you're going to go. I liked Dubrovnik a lot. And, you know, I'm going to answer my own question, which is, you know, what's your most historic city, your favorite historic city? I would say Dubrovnik is definitely um, one of my most favorite of, of all the places that we've been to. It really is. It's like everything there is very historic. You've got these this medieval and Renaissance architecture and it's really they've taken very very good care of it it's time for comments and Aiden is going to read our comments yes. Susan says my favorite fall trip hiking in the smoky mountains a very inexpensive trip with a girlfriend we flew to Knoxville rented a car and drove to Townsend Tennessee not much of a town but a short drive to a great entry point to hiking trails stayed in an ordinary motel with a kitchenette bought groceries for breakfast and lunch on the trails hiked every day until late afternoon. The trails were empty. The weather and views were gorgeous. We ate dinner in a local place and slept very well for a week. Susan, that sounds like an incredible weekend with your girlfriend. Mickey says, everyone should take a fall color tour at least once, but skip New England and go to upstate New York. The Finger Lakes are beautiful. The crowds drop in Cooperstown and you can spend time in Sakina Falls. Saratoga is fantastic. A shame to miss the racing season, but your reward is in the architecture. Go to Hyde Park, have a nice meal from the students at the CIA or the Culinary Institute of America. A lot of people sometimes confuse that. And tour around the Catskills. Oh, we would love to go to the Catskills. <laughs> now, that would be something to have CIA agents serving you food. Yes. Yes, like, here you go. That's an image. And no complaints from you. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, no complaints they, they got you, this, you know. They uh, gun with a silencer on it. We had an amazing time in Dubrovnik, but I am really looking forward to this next weekend when we are going to be in Zagreb, the capital. Zagreb. We're going to be driving up there tomorrow. We rented a car and, uh, and we're going to check out this very historic capital city. 
um, and uh, we'll report back. But I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, we'll not we won't get killed in the uh, traffic because the, the traffic here is pretty bad. Oh yeah, people park on the sidewalks. It's nuts. It is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. See y'all. Peace. Peace.